One, two, three, four. It's going to be a big week this week. It is. Our 20th anniversary of entertaining Livingston County. That's right. As a morning partnership. A morning team we are. And now we're just in morning. Any time <laughs> so, of the day. <laughs> team. Yes, but it was 20 years ago that we uh, first went on the air as Mike and John. But actually back then right. it was Marino and the morning crew. Yeah. Was. I was just and the crew. Yeah, you were. You were kind of I was kind of like, like uh, hey, I don't like yeah, being and the like crew. Kind of like a professor. And... I don't like, yeah, I was like, right. <laughs> and the rest. Yeah. I'm like, uh, you know, I don't want to be and the rest. <laughs> so I got my agent on it. Well, it's time for Mike yeah. and John. Mike and the rest <laughs> got it going on. Yeah. So. <laughs> to celebrate 20 yeah. years of entertaining in Livingston County. Well, entertaining and living in uh, Livingston County local happenings. Right. Exactly. So here well, we go. happy anniversary. Well, thank you. And of course, That's awesome. Susan is here to uh, join us, a.k.a. Yeah. Cougar. And uh, matter of fact, I posted a video over the weekend that uh, somebody had online of Brighton in 1981. Right, they drove through with a camera down Grand River and then Main Street, a bunch of, kind of drove around the area. So as a, a former and, radio guy, the yeah. first thing I'm doing is trying to identify the songs that are playing because they were country That's true. songs. true, they had the radio going. Yeah, <laughs> and um, I'm like going, yeah. boy, this is 1981 country. You know, and I, I was looking through the video, I'm like, I'm noticing some smoke. <laughs> and it's sort of billowing across the camera lens, but I, I'm sure it was just a, a Marlboro. No, I'm sure it was just a Marlboro. I just you know could have been a camel. I'm just saying. All right, so we'll talk about that. Yeah, coming up. A, while, uh, of course, a lot of response to that video. So, so we'll get to that, and of course, uh, local news brought to you by Cooper and Binkley Jewelers in downtown Brighton. All right, here's what's going on. A Livingston County man has been bound over for trial in a 25 year old cold case murder. John A. Germain Maine of Heartland was charged August 2nd with the murder and the sexual assault. Hold on here. Why is this not? There we go. Are you not hearing I you? I think that's working now. Is All that right. you? Yes. Take two. You. All right. This is me now. All right. I don't know. Am I here? You're here. 20 years you think we get this right. <laughs> but we don't. I did my part right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what, what is going on that? over there. I don't know. Do we need know. to restart the show? No, no. All right. Heck no. We don't do that. I'm going to play the same we'll, thing over and we'll, over. Uh, we'll fix again. all this in post, <laughs> you know, as they say. Yeah, is that what they say? Yeah, that's what I say. All right, take two. A Livingston County man has been bound over for trial in a 25-year-old cold case murder. John A. Germain of Heartland Township was charged August 2nd with the murder and sexual assault of 79-year-old Virginia Cecile Farrell, uh, Farrell, who was beaten and stabbed to death inside her Clay Township home in May of 1997. Court records indicate Jermaine, 54, was bound over last Tuesday to stand trial in St. Clair County Circuit Court on charges of open murder, first-degree criminal sexual conduct, and breaking and entering. Farrell's murder case was originally reopened in 2007 when a state police cold case team made requests for additional lab exams of evidence taken from the crime scene. A DNA profile was developed through the lab tests, although no suspects were identified. Then in 2019, a second state police cold case investigation with further scientific evaluations of the DNA evidence, which was then submitted to the combined DNA index system. That turned up Germain. He remains jailed on a $1 million bond. A Livingston County man who pleaded guilty for his role in the 2020 plot to kidnap Governor Whitmer has had his prison sentence more than cut in half. 26-year-old Ty Garbin of Heartland Township had originally been sentenced to serve 75 months in prison, but on Friday, U.S. District Court Judge Robert Yonker reduced Garbin's sentence to 30 months. Based on the government's representations of substantial assistance provided to them by the defendant, the court's independent assessment of the value of the assistance, the defendant's response, and all other pertinent factors, the defendant's sentence is hereby reduced from 75 months to 30 months, wrote Yonker in his order. Garbrin, who testified in two federal trials against his fellow conspirators, the first of which ended in not guilty verdicts against two co-defendants and a mistrial for two others, was the first to plead guilty for his role in the plot. A second trial ended in August with guilty verdicts against Adam Fox and Barry Croft Jr. They are appealing. 
Another co-defendant, Caleb Franks, also testified for the prosecution after pleading guilty in February. He is scheduled for sentencing October 6th. Meanwhile, eight others are facing state charges for their roles in the plot. Queer Families of Livingston started simply enough a few families at Howell Pride discussing playdates for their kids. In an interview with Gigo News, Chelsea Steinhauser said the initiative gained momentum when she and, other, uh, she and her wife, Sarah, started looking for social opportunities for their kids. What initially started as a mission to find other families that looked like theirs has blossomed into a much greater network than they could have anticipated. Within the first day of establishing a Facebook group, over 200 people reached out expressing support for and interest in the community. The immense outreach highlights what Steinhauser describes as the need for opportunities for building relationships in communities. Steinhauser also noted that while details are still in the works, the group is looking forward to more events and opportunities in October, particularly for National Coming Out Day. In the meantime, they plan to continue networking and expanding through their newly revamped Facebook page. And that's what's going on. And news brought to you by Cooper and Binkley Jewelers in downtown Brighton, Brighton's preeminent jewelry store with a commitment to community service, community involvement, honesty, professionalism, and of course, exquisite merchandise. Of course, they played a, a big part in this past weekend's event for La Casa Denim and Diamonds, as they've done in the past. And we look forward to being with them this coming Saturday for the Walk to End Alls, Alzheimer's, right. in uh, downtown Brighton. So it's going to be a great time for a great cause. More details are available online if you'd like to join our what are we the 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 um, bling we're, team we're part of the bling team we are not the bling team itself we're part we of we have bling no team. bling yes. we're just a part of the team right yes right so that's coming up this saturday in downtown brighton so if you're looking for custom designs or any type of jewelry stop by cooper and binkley jewelers in downtown brighton they've got the latest from simon g and zagani in store cooper and binkley jewelers main street in downtown brighton or online at cooper and binkley jewelers.com how long has Cooper and Binkley been around? Were they in the video that I posted? Well, don't I, don't forget. Um, I don't know what is going on with this thing. They here. were there <clears throat> when I was a kid, yeah. but it was just Cooper's. All right, right, because Barb Cooper wasn't it? We heard the story. <laughs> Don't you remember the you story? You just don't remember the story. Do you remember do you? the story? Of course, I remember. All right, the then story. you tell the story. When Mark and Barb met and decided to oh, unite. <laughs> what did you do to this I, over I the weekend? I don't know what I did to this thing. Is it my microphone then that's not working? I don't know what. No, it's. Is it yours? It is. Okay, then we're all right. Yeah, <laughs> I figured you. I figured you would have no problem with that. <laughs> did you plug everything in? Yeah. Did why. you check the Fetzer valve? Yeah. Oh, hold on. Let me. <laughs> the Fetzer valve working. Give okay? me the Sonic screwdriver and I'll get on that. I don't know why, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure what is happening here. Oh, now I see what you're doing. You're unplugging right. Susan. No, I'm just, I don't want to see. That. <laughs> Susan unplugged. All right. No, that's still not. Maybe I don't know what's going on. All right. Uh, no, no. It's just, I don't know. <laughs> Move on. I guess we roll on. Move on. Okay, so let's let's talk a little about the video that uh, was was made in 1981, a drive through Brighton. And when I first saw them, I'm like going, okay, where are they at right now? In the very beginning of the video. Could you tell Susan? It looked, weren't they about like where 96 crosses over Grand River? It eventually right. got yeah. to that. It was Hughes Row. Yeah. So yeah. when they came to the old Pizza Hut's there, you see the gas station, which isn't a BP, no. which it is now. And then you see the overpass. Yeah. And that's when you're like, okay, I know where I'm at. And for those that grew up in the area, like Susan did, I would imagine that strip of Grand River. That was amazing. <laughs> that was our that was our thing to do. Was cruise on Grand River Friday and Saturday evenings was just cruise up and down Grand River. Right. Uh, you start at the Brighton Mall that right. used to be the Brighton and Indoor Mall, um, and then and that was pre movie theater because yes. there was a movie theater at ninety six in Grand River. Yes. Yeah, yep. I remember that, um, but it wasn't there yet. No. And then uh, you'd work your way down uh, East Grand River, um, down to Lakeview Roller Rink, which was is now, I believe, Ritter's Custard Place. Okay. Okay. So yeah, that's way on the other that's side. The, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's towards Twenty Three. Here you've crossed over Twenty Three to get yeah. to that. I think that's what it was called. There was also right. a drive-in theater right there. 
Oh, I didn't realize Freddie had a drive-thru. Maybe that's back in what the, the drive-thru theater was called, Lakeview, and the roller rink was Lake Lend. I don't remember. Okay, now I had asked you. I said, was that no? Was that Rollerama one? Because I'm familiar with Rollerama two. Right. But you're saying no. No, I yeah. I don't know the story of Rollerama one and Rollerama two, but it's the same building. Okay. Oh, it was always there. Okay. Yeah, it was always there. That was but like you, V2. But you said that other that other uh, rolling or rink was. Yes. Uh, what was it? How did you refer to it? The rough one. It was the so rough one. So wow. my brother was five years older than me, and um, he was of a different um, crowd than <laughs> I was. You were a good girl. And he was a bad boy. <laughs> I probably would have hung with your brother. He was right? a bad boy. <laughs> and so it could have just been the vision that I had because of his stories that he told me. Maybe ah. he just didn't want me to go there. Right. Yeah, could have However, been. However, I went to Rollerama. Okay, you went to the good rink. Yes. <laughs> and, well, and actually, I had to be a good girl, because my dad was mayor of Brighton. So look what? at that. We did not know your what? dad was We're the mayor of Brighton. What? We're just getting this information? Wow. For 12 years. Wow. Yeah. When was this? Oh, uh, gosh. I want to say it began in 81. Okay. 80. So through the 80s, he was yeah. the mayor of Brighton. So he was getting free hot dogs. <laughs> yeah, and he, Cody Joe. This is your vi- this is your vision of what the mayor does. <laughs> just gets free hot dogs. He walks in. I'm, yeah, the, mayor. I'm the mayor. Free well, hot dog, please. <laughs> well, Cody Joe's probably <laughs> probably had a plaque with his name on. Exactly. So did you hang out at Cody Joe's too? I do, absolutely. Yeah. I did. Yeah. Okay. Um, Schaefer's House of Music was right on the corner yeah. where Lou and Carl's okay. was. Okay. Right. And so they had a great window. Um, I would go early for my guitar lessons and sit at the little bench by the window and watch traffic on Grand River and Main Street. It was uh, a different, different town. That's for sure. yeah. See, kids, back in the day, <laughs> we didn't have phones to stare at, so we had to look out the window and look at traffic. Yeah, that's really it is. Watch yeah. cars go by. That's right. Did your grocery true. shopping at Sifas? Yeah. In Sifas, Uber, uh, Uber drugs. Um, yeah. No. yeah. It really was DNC uh, Dime Store down on Main Street. The big yeah. thing was riding your bike up there and getting nickel oh, yeah. candy and oh on God. nickel yeah. candy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, and I remember that as well. You know, going to the the, the party store or whatever and getting yeah. getting your nickel candy. And you're like, I tell that to my kids and I'm like, how old I are know. you? It yeah. sounds what's horrible. a nickel? Yeah, <laughs> yeah what's a nickel? Right. Yeah. They imagine me riding my big bike with the big front wheel on it, and my bowler hat on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my dad uh, actually stopped, resigned being mayor because of all the growth. Um, it got to the point where he was actually um, declining any further growth um, okay. or certain types of growth and everybody would veto it because they did have the power to do that. Right. Well, they and wanted the money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so he got out and moved to Fenton, which was a very small town back then. And now Fenton is kind of yeah. the new Brighton. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, it was Well, very cool. We got a little history lesson yeah. too. Being the mayor's daughter. Okay. So you had to, you had to, you know, uphold the family I, reputation. I did. Yeah. I, um, my, well, my brother gave them a run for their money. <laughs> okay. so it balanced it out. It all balanced <laughs> out. The mayor couldn't have two bad kids. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, yeah, if you if you watch the video on our Facebook page, it's very... Uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. It's pretty very cool enlightening. And, and the thing is, you're, I mean, you're right. You get a, 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 a marker at the beginning and realize, oh, that's the overpass. But if you come in after the overpass... Yeah. Because so much of Grand River at that point was not developed, you're like, I don't know where we're at. Yeah, I, well, there's trees, and it's all, and none of that is that's all gone. I mean, that's all developed now. So. Yeah, it was just a big boy yeah. in Mount Brighton, pretty much, yeah, right? right? Back in the '80s, pretty much. Yeah, yeah there was um, Little Chef. Rest, yeah, Little Chef uh, restaurant. Um, Gus's carry out was right. there. Um, I remember when we were able, we had an open campus, so we could leave for lunch in high school. Um, so yeah. the big thing was to go as fast as you can. We to had, Gus's, um, yeah. We did have Wendy's. Um, I don't remember if Burger King, but I would go to Wendy's and get the salad bar, and I'd go to Gus's to get the breadsticks. Right. <laughs> and McDonald's to get the Coke. I mean, wow, <laughs> you made a triple stop. <laughs> that's, you know, the best lunch ever. On so. the open campus. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Remember open campuses. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> we used to go to the Detroit Bagel Factory. At one point, we'd 
zip out, grab a pizza bagel, oh, yeah. come back. All right. We have other things to take care of today. Do we, though? We do. Hey. Of course. You, um, you didn't mention who brought us news, did you? I did you? I don't remember. Yes. Yeah, you I was, were, you I were was fiddling around, around with the microphone. I don't know. Well, I was right. talking about okay. Brighton Walk for Alzheimer's. Remember all that? Yeah, I know. We that. A little it's recall. all coming diamonds. back to me. Right. Now. Excellent. All right. <laughs> Covered that. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what I didn't cover? Yeah, what did you since, cover? Since we, we have the original mayor's daughter, yeah. the OJ sponsor, right? the the original sponsor. Uh, the OG, OG sponsor. sponsor. Not the OJ sponsor. <laughs> you can sponsor, sponsor Orange yeah. Juice. <laughs> nothing wrong with that okay just because you went that one doesn't really sell very well (laughs) the og sponsor the program firehouse doors that's right serving livingston county residents for the past 24 years family owned they strive to treat each customer like family veteran owned mike a proud u.s air force veteran they're your one-stop shop for residential commercial and rolling steel overhead door needs and for the past 21 years firehouse doors has been livingston county's only authorized distributor for chi overhead doors Call Firehouse Doors today, 810-599-7480. And in our trivia question, the SNT, you had a chance to uh, qualify qualify to win the LiftMaster 8365. We are in the 8365 studios. And in fact, Susan, why don't you tell the folks about the LiftMaster 8365? All right. Well, the LiftMaster model 8365 chain drive residential garage door opener. Firehouse doors will remove the old opener and install the new. This includes two remote controls and an outside keyless entry. Right. Exactly. Uh, excellent job, by the way. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, that's your chance if you uh, if you are drawn for the LiftMaster 8365, and we qualified you through the SNT. Yes, we did. Yes. Is this now you want me to reveal? This is now leader? your part. This is my yeah. part. This is yours. Smooth. Well, After 20 years, so smooth, these transitions. 25% yeah. of people surveyed. That's one in four. <laughs> Thank you for that. Said they do this on a regular basis at home, yeah. but might be embarrassed doing it in a public setting. Right. You want to know what my What yeah, was your answer? What was your guess? Watching... Mike and John, gotta go. Oh. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people don't want to admit to doing that I, in public. I think there's a lot of people that are embarrassed to do it in private, yeah. frankly. I, Why are you laughing? <laughs> what kind of idiots are you watching? Yeah. Uh, so a few people said fart. Yeah, I mean, that's that's something, it, it can be embarrassing. I would say if you're comfortable letting one rip in public, I mean, you I know. I think some people, everybody does it, John. Now, come on. I understand that, but there's ways to do it. Yeah, as you know, as a female, I really don't mind the sound. It's the smell. Well, of course. Okay. Yeah. So if you're like the sound is fun. Sometimes yeah. the sound can be very impressive. Like, whoa, whoa. nice job, <laughs> sir. <laughs> <Or great>. <laughs> <laughs> Need a new pair of underwear. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> but then the smell is uh, yeah. That's well, like, and look, silent but deadly is a real thing. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because you know. So thanks to Don and Jeff <laughs> so, and the other fart right. dressers for all you, that up. Yeah, all you crop dusters out there. <laughs> A uh, few people said dance. Some people will dance at home and they feel comfortable with that. Right. They get out in public, ain't going to happen. Susan, you probably have seen that. Oh, absolutely. Um, Jessica said pick <laughs> how many their drink, How many drinks in? <laughs> <laughs> I was at a wedding over the weekend and open bar and well, <laughs> after a while I'm out there cutting a rug. <laughs> now what I was actually doing, I have no idea. In my mind, I was John Travolta in Saturday Night Fever. <laughs> Then everybody else. What was that? What was actually happening out there? I don't want to know. It was the Elaine dance. <laughs> from Seinfeld. Does anybody have a video of that? <laughs> <laughs> now a few people said pick their nose. Okay. I guess if you're going to do it, you do it in public, or you do it in private, and it's it's fine. Nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> Pamela said exercise. Uh, Nancy said floss. I don't know too many people that floss right. in public, but I see a lot of people while they're driving. Right. Well, you see those floss picks? Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot easier. I see them on the ground all yeah. the time, and I'm like, hey, what? I, I don't understand the entire process. Number one, why are you flossing in the parking lot at Meyer? Well, I don't understand. You and then when you're done, back. hey, you pig, they just throw their, ah, 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 I'm done. You know, we're trying to have a civilization here. Clean teeth, messy parking throw lot. Throw your garbage in the garbage, you yeah. Yeah. I don't. Lot. I don't understand the floss picks in the parking lot. Uh, Tina and a few others said pray. Right. 
There are times when I'm standing in line and I'm praying the person in front of me doesn't have coupons or is going to write a check. Or that they fart. <laughs> they're, they're too. <laughs> or you're praying that you're not going to let it go. Or you don't. Right. Either oh way. God. Oh, God. I feel it coming on. Oh, God, please. I shouldn't have stopped the Taco Bell. Shouldn't have stopped the Taco Bell. So uh, Our friend Scott said, eat ribs. <laughs> now, I'm sorry. I think you get a free pass when you're eating ribs. No, you don't. No. I mean, you cannot be a pig. You should floss there's no too way. after eating ribs. There's no way. I mean, you know what? Don't eat ribs. You, if you're That's sitting there with ribs with a fork and a knife, no. I want to come just take your ribs away from you. Nope. You don't deserve ribs. Sorry. <laughs> well, nope. I see you're the, the. That's like eating your pizza with a fork and a knife. When no. it's really hot, yeah, you can cut both. that. You can cut that. No. No, you In can't. the beginning, yeah, you cut nope. the tip off, right? Nope. Am I right? You cut nope. the tip off, you nope. let it cool down a little bit nope. so you don't burn nope. the roof you of your just, mouth. Wait, no, you burn the roof of your mouth. <laughs> That's how you eat pizza, fella. <laughs> <laughs> a few people said sing. Well, Susan sings in public all the time. This is true. And has no need to be embarrassed because no. she's a good singer. Thank you very much. Yeah. Our answer? Was sing in the shower. Ah, uh, specifically. So perhaps you're at a hotel. You feel like belting one out. Right. Maybe not the place to do it. Because some of us who sing in the shower or sing in their car right. think they're a lot better singer than they really are. Well, the acoustics are amazing <laughs> in the shower. <laughs> That's right. So it does make you feel like, wow, right. this I is, sound sounds pretty good. really good. <laughs> right. And then you get out of the shower and continue singing, and you're yeah. like, whoa. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 That's right, right. <laughs> It's kind of like when you sing into the car radio. <laughs> I sound just like the Beatles and turn it down. Oh, no, no I don't. I don't. Yeah, yeah. Never mind. Okay, Pete Best. Yeah. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so congratulations to Dan White. All right. Dan, Dan White. Right? And Dan's name will be put into the 8365 right. LiftMaster drawing. Don't forget to do that. You're um, in charge. Would of I forget to your, do that? Yeah. I'm not going to forget to All do right, that. How can I do that? Write that down. Dan <laughs> White. <laughs> right. Yes. Daniel Excellent. White. I'm putting him in on an official... Mike and John entry form. I see way. that, by the way. Can, can you hand me the scissors? Uh, sure. Can I have to trim yeah, up this sure. thing. There you go. Thank you. Put I, point down. I, handed, that's how you I do handed them to you safely. Yes. Thank you very much. We should get rounded scissors. Yeah. You know how we are. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes, so putting Dan you're... into the entry box. How old are these scissors? What kind of crap is on these scissors? Take a look at that. <laughs> you it's don't like, want to know. It's like rust. I think those are mine in kindergarten. No, look at that. No, no, those are actually, if I think those are. I got to cut Dan's name here. I'm oh. trying to. Maybe it would have been better if I folded and, and ripped. All right, let me see there you scissors. go. All right. so Susan, would you, have, yeah, would you have the yeah, These are official creative memory scissors, <clears throat> if you know. Oh. Yeah, very special. Well, we just created a memory for Dan. I use them to clip my nose hairs. But anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> but not in public. <laughs> yes. Mike's like, ah! <laughs> 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 we got to wipe some hand sanitizer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so congratulations to Dan. Yes. yes. He'll be in the drawing for the 8365 LiftMaster uh, garage door opener with two remotes and a keyless entry. Panel. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We did it again. Her butt is so big. No, oh. we did it again. What? what did you do again? We have Susan in the studio, yeah. right. a.k.a. Cougar, yeah. who sings our theme song. And did we have her do the theme song to open up our no, show? No, you were too busy no. playing with No, we're 20 song. minutes into the show, and you have failed to, to let Susan sing the song. <laughs> Moment. Uh, so, I thought you were just going to use the recorded so, version. Well, well, we could. We I have couldn't. a new, oh. not new, but a different song. Are we ready for Tucson history or not yet? Not yet. No, no. We'll, we'll get there. You got a new so Tucson let's history just theme. Save. Just give us a couple chords without any vocals. Yeah, let's, let's, yeah, yeah, we'll we'll get the full thing in, in yeah. a little bit. Okay. Are you yeah. sure? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Just sure? just a, just give us a little sample. Yeah. Little, Tease us with that taste. guitar. Mm, let's see. How does it start? Uh, we just had Okay. That's the beginning. And that dancing in public, don't yeah. do that. On the, <laughs> okay, on the so that was a little this sample. This is kind of public. A little so sample of what you got there. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. So, so how um, was the wedding you were at, by the way? I, I, from what I remember, went well. Yeah. <laughs> Open bar. <laughs> <laughs> they were pouring him stiff. I was like, damn. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyways, good time. Yes. 
good time. Yes, it was. I, I'm sure you had a good time. Yeah. All right. So uh, we want to remind you about Murphy's Family Auto. And uh, they are hiring an office help porter service advisor type job. The pay is based on skill level and experience. If you're interested, you can call Murphy's Family Auto at 517-552-3040 for details. Or you can stop in to apply. And don't forget, they're open Saturdays 8 to 1. Tell them Mike and John sent you. You'll save... And, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Tell them Mike and John and Cougar <laughs> sent you. You'll save 5% off your bill. Actually, if you say Cougar sent you, well, you still save 5% off your bill. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it just sounds better. It does. Cougar sent me. Oh, well. Uh, Murphy's Family Auto. Your car knows. Go online, murphysfamilyauto.com. Yeah, John applied for the job, and they said you have to pay us. <laughs> they said no. Why, so, don't you, why don't you go do a podcast? Based on your skill level, you yeah, pay why us don't you to just, be here. Why don't you just get out of here? All right. All right we're going to do an uh, uh, interview now. Uh, we're going to talk with uh, Cindy Salfate uh, about a group that she started called Oliver's Stones. And uh, we're going to let Cindy uh, tell us more about this. Hi, Cindy. It's Mike and John and Cougar at Mike and John Got It Going On. Good morning. Good morning. You didn't Good expect morning. a Cougar on this one, did you? <laughs> well, we, like, okay. we like to keep it fresh here. Yeah, we do. <laughs> so, Cindy, Absolutely. we were talking about uh, the group that you started, Oliver Stones, and um, and and you started this after the the tragic passing of your son Oliver. Yes, Oliver was twenty um, eight when he passed away unexpectedly mm. on January fourteenth of twenty twenty one. And so, so out of that, yeah, age, out yeah. of that tragedy, I mean, I know I, there's no way for, you know, anyone to really even try and understand the grief and, and, and everything that, that you and your family have gone through. But you've tried to make something out of that tragedy and, and you started Oliver Stone. So, so tell us about, uh, tell us about the group and, and what you hope to achieve. Um, okay. So Oliver Stones, it is a Fowlerville based um, organization and what we do is, we um, provide headstones for families who have lost someone in between ages 15 and 38 because we figure at that age, like even up to 38, uh, a person may not have life insurance or enough to pay for a headstone. So we provide those at no cost. And we're not just in Michigan. We've actually dug five stones throughout the United States, and we have two more and New Jersey that we're going to do. And also we have a, a wait list too for all over the United States. Yeah, it's interesting that when you started this, and, and I'm just curious, I mean, uh, with with Oliver Stones, and I've seen, uh, you know, Oliver's headstone, which is beautiful uh, and a great memorial to him. Um, was the process of getting his headstone, did that, is that where this occurred to you that, hey. Oh my gosh, absolutely. So Oliver's headstone is Rose Quartz. And we had my uncle, Don, who was buried in DeWitt, and he passed away in 1957. He had a rose quartz, and it was something that Oliver loved. He's like, oh, my God, it's the most beautiful stone. And if you know anything about crystals, a rose quartz is the one that means, you know, love and, um, you know, all of all the a mother's love, undying love kind of stuff. So we ended up getting one for him, but we had to travel all the way to – uh, Massachusetts to get it and get it shipped here and I mean it was just an ordeal but it was well worth it because going to a grave site that doesn't have anything is devastating. Yeah. I mean he had this little stick in there that said um, Salvate Oliver and that was it you know and so um, we don't ever want another family to go through that if we could at all help them. So in, in, in doing so, how are you raising funds to, to get the, the money to, to buy these stones for people? Oh, dear Lord. Everyone is so helpful. We have a GoFundMe on the Oliver Stones um, Facebook page. And we're also selling cutlery. It's um, Rada. And it's, it's high quality, made in the United States. Awesome stuff. So And then also we have, you know, just like friends and family who will just send a check here and there. So it's just, I mean, we haven't done any corporate, um, you know, solicitation or anything like that. We're in the process of becoming a nonprofit. We have submitted all our paperwork, and now we're just waiting for the IRS um, to send us the okay. And then, you know, we're, we're good to go. And so, Cindy, it's interesting, like you said, you've got a wait list now. I mean, you're, you're, you're fundraising for stones that are not just here in, in Livingston County or even in Michigan, but really across the country. I mean... How did those connections come in? There are several um, Facebook uh, 
pages for families who are mourning, and we have just posted it out there and have gotten a huge response. If you know anyone who needs a stone, it's very, very easy to apply for it. There is a application. Um, it's more like a questionnaire. It's pinned on the Oliver Stone Facebook page, and um, someone who's interested just needs to fill it out, and then we'll look at it and, and get back with them. Now, there is a wait list, so we're trying to generate more funds, and as soon as we get funds, we um, definitely spend them on headstones. And, and of course, to get a, a proper headstone for a loved one, I mean, these are not inexpensive. I, I was mean, going to say, what's yeah. the average cost of one? Between $800 and $1,900, depending mm. on the cemetery. Right. And and with funeral costs, and as you said, if people don't have insurance, uh, which many people don't, uh, no. the funeral costs alone are going to be pretty tremendous and a strain on a family at a time when they're trying to grieve. And then... To be able to put this final marker, something that you, again, you want it to be appropriate uh, for your loved one. Um, mm -hmm. That just provides that extra financial uh, burden uh, for folks. And um, you, you certainly wouldn't want someone to have to settle on something no, that they no, that isn't appropriate. Not. Right? No, they don't settle at all. We send them the proof. If they okay it, hey, we're good. We have worked really closely with a place in Duran. It's called Marsh Monument. And they have done a fabulous job, you know, um, working well with me and with Oliver Stones. And so a lot of times um, they've done three of them. One one is, or two in Michigan, and one they're doing that we're going to take to Minnesota during um, my spring break from school. So they do a great job. And again, I send the proof to them. They approve it. But all headstones have to have a small logo that says Oliver Stones on it. I mean, it's just tiny, but just to just for them to look at it and know they're not alone. Right, and, th and that, 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 becomes, uh, that becomes Oliver's legacy. Uh, mm -hmm. Right, and uh, you know what a great tribute uh, that is. So again, uh, if folks are interested and want to know more, they can uh, just go on Facebook and search out Oliver Stones, yeah. and they'll find the yeah. group there. Um, and then as you said, you also started a GoFundMe uh, uh, for, is there, is it, uh, is there a, there's a GoFundMe for Oliver Stones, correct? I'm sorry? There's a GoFundMe account for, for oh, Oliver Stones? absolutely. Yeah. And there's a link for it on Oliver Stones, or otherwise it's just um, Oliver Stones and Fowlerville. Right. If you, so you can just go to GoFundMe and search it that way, or you can just get absolutely. the link off the Facebook page. Absolutely. And we just got um, our $3,000 um, on GoFundMe. Just We just passed, it's like $3,002, and it's all from people donating. People from all over the country and a lot right. of friends and family have donated too. But they usually they'll send me a check or maybe send me twenty bucks in the mail or something like that. But yeah, I mean Oliver was a heck of a good guy and he would be very very happy with this um, legacy. Right. Well, it's a it's a it's a great way to honor Oliver's memory, and uh, we appreciate you sharing the story with us and the information that we can pass along to others that uh, may have unfortunately lost somebody too young. Absolutely. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to learn more about Oliver Stones. Oh, absolutely, Cindy. We're, we're happy to do it. So, again, search it out on Facebook, Oliver Stones, or you can just go right to GoFundMe and, and look for the page there. All right. Cindy Salfonte, thanks for joining us. Hey, thank you for having me. Take care, guys. Thanks, right. you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. All right. We, we're going to let Susan do the song in just a minute. Right. But first, we want to thank our friends at Richter & Associates Property Management, licensed real estate brokers, rental property experts here in Livingston County, also Genesee and Oakland Counties. 40 plus years in the business. They're in downtown Howell. Call 517-540-9560 or richterassoc.com online. Right. And Richter Assoc, R-I-C-H-T-E-R-A-S-S-O-C.com. Just rolls off the tongue. Richter Associates. It's John's. Yeah. I'm in the Mickey Mouse hey, Club moment. You should have seen me saying it Saturday at the yeah. wedding. At yeah. Five or six times. R-I-C-H-L-M-N-O-P. Anyway. Well, it's too bad Susan and I couldn't have been there for that. Again, anybody have videos? Damn. Did you make the Twitter page? Yeah. All right. Instagram. <laughs> All right, our two cent history lesson coming up, and Susan with our new two cent his history right. song. Yes.
brought to you by <laughs> Oakland Insurance. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Very nice. All right. Okay, but wait. You know, I have to tell everybody that I was up at 1.30 in the morning, and the song, not this song, but a song was running through my head, like, nonstop. Was it Hell's Bells? No, but <laughs> what was it? What not was the song? far off. But then I kept putting um, Two Cent History into the song. And what was the song, can you say? Um, so in my head, it was... Give me two cents, give me two cents, oh. history, give me two cents, no less, no more. Oh, that's great. That's like three steps. Give me two, two cents, cents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. give me two cents, history, oh. so I can learn before I go out the door. Oh, my God, that's perfect. Yeah. Why don't you, <laughs> right that that should be next week. Yeah, right. next week. All I right. do not have the rights to that song. Oh. But. Well, you, <clears> but well, it's you, fair you, use. You, yeah. You've rewritten it. Yeah, yeah. You, it's yeah. a rewrite. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and uh, so you know, there's certainly not going to be any profit is made. It's probably so. going to be your song, Mike. Okay, all right. Uh, let's see. Today's September 19th. Right. It's International Talk Like a Pirate Day, but don't. Huh. Oh, yo ho ho and a bottle of rum. I can move it now. Do I need to move again? Well, you keep. Yeah, I, don't know I keep leaning. I don't know in. what you're doing. This is the critique. I don't know what you're you doing. You keep leaning in. I never know what you're doing, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a drone. Yeah. <laughs> you it's drone a, on and uh, on and on. All right, go on. <laughs> drone on. Wow, that's like the pie column in the kettle black, isn't it? <laughs> it's uh, International Butterscotch Pudding Day and National Thank a Police Officer Day. Thank you, police officer. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Officer. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> Wait a minute. We're not the police officers. <laughs> You're welcome. Wait a minute. In 1783, the first experiment in sending live animals up in a balloon was conducted. Mm. The passengers included a sheep, a rooster, and a duck. Mm. Well, now a duck, ducks can fly. <laughs> <laughs> I think the ducks have I, been in the air before. I think they wanted but to now see that it. They're in the thing. That's the yeah. bucket. I, I think they were testing to see if it would fly out of. Yeah. And did it? I don't think so. It's very incomplete. Lesson. They all came back with smiles on their face. <laughs> sure. Mile high club. And then they had a wonderful dinner of duck, <laughs> chicken, <laughs> and lamb. <laughs> mm. To celebrate. Right. You all made it back safely. <laughs> Welcome to dinner. That's right. <laughs> You're our guest. 1838, the railroad break was patented on this day. Hmm. What's well, a good it thing? Begs one to wonder they figured how it they out. stopped the train before that. <laughs> it's that emergency how many break. The train it was, did not stop. Exactly. In order to yeah. Maybe it was like the Flintstones that just put their feet a, down through the floor. <laughs> I think we need a break for this thing. <laughs> it was on this day in 1876, Melville Bissell, an American. Invented the first carpet sweeper. Yeah. Thank you, Melville. Yes, thank you. What? Is that a Bissell? That's one of those. I'm sure that's one of those stick sweepers. Yes. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Where you just roll it across. It. So it makes my job a lot easier. The old Bissell. That's true. I for, you know we we have not mentioned in a while that uh, yes. of course your your paying gig <laughs> as much as this pays you <laughs> is uh, of course uh, you have a house cleaning business. Yes, I do. Susie clean. Susie clean. Susie clean. Yes. There you go. Do you use a Bissell? I don't. You got a Dyson? I got a shark. A shark? Oh, I a got shark. a shark, too. <laughs> Gets yeah. the dog hair up really That's what he says all the time. I got a shark. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like a guppy. Anyway. In 1893, New Zealand became the first country to grant women the right to vote. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Only took until 1893. Yeah. 1893. Yeah. I think America was about 27 years later. Look at you with the math. That's impressive. 1985, a U.S. Senate committee heard testimony on labeling and rating of rock music initiated by the Parents Music Resource Center. Mm -hmm. Tipper Gore. We don't want to hear those lyrics. Yeah. That'll There's great. Talk about sex. Oh, I know. Oh, yes. <laughs> These kids are listening to rock and roll. <laughs> okay, Tipper. Calm down. <laughs> there's has been tipped. There's great. Uh, if you go, go on YouTube, there's a great video of Frank Zappa and of um, who's a singer for Twisted Sister? Uh, Dee Snyder. Dee Snyder. 
both testifying in front of this committee, just ripping them to shreds. It's great stuff. We're not going to take it, yeah. D said. That's what he pretty much did, yeah. <laughs> and since we're talking about singers, yeah. in 2004, Canadian singer Celine Dion. Celine Dion. Extended her Las Vegas show for another year. Oh. Las Vegas said, thanks, Celine. I'm sure they did. She was reportedly being paid $100 million for the original three-year run. Wow. Of five 90-minute concerts a week. When are we going to announce our Las Vegas residence? Well, we're working on that. <laughs> right. when we show up at the old age At the old Hazen Hotel. It's Mike and John residency. Yep. <laughs> it's Tapioca Day. Yay! Welcome to the Motel 6. <laughs> Here on the Vegas we'll Strip, the right. far end of the we'll leave a light on because you keep stumbling around in the dark, so you got to leave the light on for these guys. <laughs> that is your two cent history yeah. lesson, brought to you, of course, by Oakland Insurance. It may be the last thing on your mind, as it was on ours, because I don't think we pre-sold it. I said it, but again, yeah. you weren't listening. I don't listen. When to I, you. I, you know, <laughs> did you do the entire ad? No, I did the just, intro yeah. because you were supposed to yeah. pick it up yeah. because I do the history lesson. Right. <laughs> now, you're embarrassing us in front of everyone. So, did we mention that it's 20 years together this week? <laughs> <laughs> can you tell? Can, can you tell? <laughs> I don't, we may not make 20 years. <laughs> we may not make the end of this show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's, a, that's it. I quit. <laughs> All right. Insurance may be the last thing on your mind, but that's okay. It's the first thing on theirs every day. Of course, we're talking about Drew Goble at Oakland Insurance and Michigan based Frankenmuth Insurance, providing you the peace of mind you need. At Oakland Insurance, they believe the best relationships are honest, upfront, and fair. If you want to get frank about insurance, call Drew Goble. Again, if you want Frank, call Drew. It's very simple. Mm -hmm. Drew well, Goble. Frank doesn't work there. No, Frank. Frank's not here. Frank's I just want to be clear. <laughs> Maybe Frank does work there. I don't know. We should call. <laughs> we should call and see if Frank is there. Call, call that number and see. <laughs> it's Drew Goble, Oakland Insurance. What's two the four, number? 248 yeah. 647 2500. Right, let's see what happens here. Whoops. It, 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 no, no. You didn't, you didn't hit the whole number there. Yeah, yeah. try it again. All right. 248 647 647 2500. There we go. Thank you for calling Oakland Insurance. Our office is currently closed. Yeah. Our hours of operation are 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. Well, we'll, you know right. we'll call later. And oh, you, you were going to leave a message for Frank? No. We'll do okay. that tomorrow. Maybe they have like a dial by name directory. Look for Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they <laughs> okay. Again, that's Oakland Insurance. Call Drew Goble, 248-647-2500. You know, I, I want to throw in a little critique here. I noticed that when you said best relationships yeah. are honest, your voice went higher. Yeah. And that's usually when people are lying. Really? Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what I've, I've really? seen on TV shows. <laughs> So are you saying that Drew Goble is a liar? No, the our way advertiser? you said it. I think you're just now criticizing our advertiser. The way you said it, it sounds I'm sorry. dishonest. Hello. Uh, Drew's on the phone. <laughs> he wants his money back. <laughs> well, if Drew's calling on your computer mouse, that's pretty weird. <laughs> you don't have the kind of computer mouse I have. <laughs> All right. That's uh, thanks, Drew, yeah. and Oakland Insurance. We appreciate your sponsorship. <laughs> to the Two Cent History Lesson, oh, which yeah. now has its theme song. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Does. And next week we we'll get the maybe new. Maybe we want to play it out. Um, maybe she doesn't. Yeah. Maybe she's going to rewrite it down. Right. Let's see. Give me two cents. Give me two cents of more. I'm singing the old song. That's fine. That's okay. I said two cents towards the door. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll work on it. That's that. okay. <laughs> But go towards the door. So, so that's how things come, like well, at one thirty in the morning when I'm supposed to be sleeping. Right, right. Was it storming at that point? Mike, not yet. Not yet. It was okay. brewing. Right. Susan was thinking me at one thirty in the morning. Yeah. How about that? And she's like, oh god, I gotta go see these idiots. <laughs> Mike, Mike Marino was in my brain. Oh. Well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up this Saturday, it's the 2022 Walk to End Alzheimer's in Livingston. That's right. But Saturday, Livingston County, not just Brighton. It's yeah. the whole county. It's in downtown Brighton, but yes. it, it, uh, it's for the walk for the entire county, and that's Saturday, September 24th. Registration at 9 a.m. Ceremony will be at 10.30, and then the walk gets underway at 10.45. All the funds raised through the Walk to End Alzheimer's further the care, support, and research efforts of the Alzheimer's Association. We will be out there. What are we wearing to the ceremony, John? 
well, our Walk for Alzheimer's t-shirts. Okay. Um, and uh, it will be there. Uh, we have our own special tent set up. Nice. That's very nice. Yeah. When he says it there. like that, it sounds very impressive. Our own yeah. special Wait, tent. Wait, Cougar will be there? I will be participating. Oh, in the okay. walk. Cougar's yes. one of the walkers. Are you going to walk with your guitar? No, I'm Walk not. and sing? <laughs> <laughs> I, I might sing, but yeah. I will not have okay. guitar. I'm walking. <laughs> yes, See? indeed. And there you go. There you go. <laughs> just, just sing that over and over <laughs> and over again. At 1.30 in the morning. You'll be like the I Pied Piper. Boots are made for walking. <laughs> Follow yeah. Susan, everybody. <laughs> I'm walking. I can already see. You know, the 74th go around. Like, All right, we're walking. We'll have to have walking songs. <laughs> well, you know what? They can go walk this way. Walk this, this way. way. Talk this <laughs> you know? See? Yeah. yeah. Sure. Right. The walk of life. <laughs> These say, boots are made for walking. You, you go. got it all. You we'll have to wear that. boots. Yes. Well, she um, wears boots. Yeah. Thank you. Well, but maybe not for a walk. Not for a walk. I mean, maybe. How do you I, know? I, I don't know. Maybe I'm going to find out on Saturday, September right. 24th, at the Walk Dand Alzheimer's yeah. downtown in downtown Bright. Bright. All right. All right. That's our show for today. Coming up tomorrow, is. Uncle Bill will join us for School of the Fools. All right. Do we have anything else besides that? Oh, maybe a two cent history lesson. I'm sure we will, but we won't have the theme. Why do you got to bring a downer on this? Because <laughs> you're already going to be living off the, oh, she was thinking about me one thirty in the morning. Oh, my God. <laughs> if it were you, we'd yeah. be hearing about it for three weeks. Right. All right. Take us out, Susan. <laughs> Perhaps the out, out Q Q should be Mike and John had it going on. <laughs> well, I right. could do We that. are post show. Now. Oh, we're post show. Yeah, oh, this is post show. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're going to do the big reveal now here on the post show. Okay. John usually brings the dog into the show. Right. So he can blame it on the dog. Right. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Rocky is with us. <laughs> well, let's, uh, hey, yeah, can can we get a picture of Rocky? How involved he is in the show? Oh, look at him! <laughs> yes, Rocky, uh, not happy with the storms this morning. His dogs tend to be uh, a little shaky, little shaky, but he's shaky all the time. All right, so um, so let's talk about the wedding you were at. Yes, and the dancing that you. Claim to have done. There was some sort of movement up on a floor. I wouldn't call it dancing. So what was the more song? me just stumbling into people? Hey! So it was no. like you were the pinball, it's, it's right. <laughs> and the people were the bumpers. No, it, was, it was a very good time. Our friend David Hayes, who's uh, represented by the plush up in the corner there, the Joe Brony plush. Do you want to see him right? Right there. there. Right there. Yeah. Oh, you just pointed at his. <laughs> well, yeah, he is wearing plush. a unitard. <laughs> um, he was the officiant at the wedding. Does that really make it legal? Yeah. It seemed to be legal. They did sign papers, although someone was saying, "Hey, wait a minute! This is this it's is a, a uh, this is a fishing license. It's an IOU. <laughs> yeah, what's going on here?" <laughs> no, it was very lovely. Our good friends Frank and Michelle got married. So, well, congratulations, nice. Frank and Michelle. Yes, yes. congratulations. Yes. And uh, had well, a had a very nice. Uh, Susan had a wedding. We didn't get invited to that, probably because yeah. we were dancing. Oh, right. Okay. Yes. So you got married not too long ago. It was very small, yeah. just immediate family, because you know, we've done it before. Right. You've been there, done that. Yeah, and this is so we just kind of did it in a barn. It was right. in a barn. Yeah. What, where would you do the wedding, though? hey <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. This is why we didn't get invited to the wedding. <laughs> 20 years. I know. Years. <laughs> She's like, I think it's only been 20 weeks, and uh, frankly, that's enough. I, <laughs> I've had enough. So, right. so did you, you didn't go on a honeymoon. I did not. No, are you planning one? Well, hopefully. Or is this it? Yeah, in your, your podcast. <laughs> Craig will okay. really like this. Yeah, no, I don't know. No, I'm hoping yeah. to go out west to visit my kids. Okay. And take Craig with me. He has not been out there yet with me. Oh. So. Where do they live? Uh, my daughter's in Arizona. All right. And my son is in California. All right. Very nice. That is west. Yes. So. <laughs> That's <laughs> very west. Good job, Magellan. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Yeah, so that'll be nice. It will be. Yeah. And it's always been nice to have you here in the studio. Yeah, we Thank you very much it. for having me. Of course. Love it. All right, every Monday. We'll see you uh, Saturday at the walk. And she'll be at the walk. Come say hello. We'll find out if she's wearing boots. And I will be seeing <laughs> The review.
will be boots for walking. Yes.